Well, hi, Paul. Um, it's so great to be here with you today. And I know we have a lot of really great things to talk about, but before we actually get into some of the questions I have for you, and I know you have some questions for me, um, why don't we go ahead and just kind of introduce ourselves to those that might, you know, be wanting to know a little bit more about you and maybe a little bit about me. So, Paul, can you tell us, you know, how long you've been at HCL Technologies and what your role is there? Sure. Thank you, Tanya. And it's a, it's a pleasure to do this with you today. In the spring, the weather is picking up, so it's it's a, it's a good time to do this. <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Van Deventer. Um, I have been at HCL now for more than 12 years. Um, and I have primary responsibility with our company to drive two sectors of our business. One is aerospace and defense, and then the other side is the government sector. A lot of similarities between the two, a lot of restrictions when it comes to regulatory compliance, uh, complex procurement methodologies, et cetera. Um, so that's a little bit about my background. I've been in the consulting and global sourcing world now for about 30 years. Wonderful. Lots of experience there, I'm sure. Well, I, I'm Tanya Fowler, and I'm with Frost & Sullivan. I am the Global Vice President of our Executive Board Projects, which is operations, essentially. And um, But I've been at Frost & Sullivan for almost 18 years, so I know quite a bit about what it is that we do here. And so I'm really excited to learn more, though, about HCL Technologies, because we really love to hear about companies that are um, leading in their markets. I love hearing about like this because it makes me a really great person to talk to at a dinner party because I know all the wonderful things that you all are doing. So why don't we go ahead and I don't know, but you have a maybe a question for me first to get us started. Yeah, so obviously uh, we were very pleased and, and happy to be awarded the uh, Movers and Shakers Award for disruptive aerospace technologies for our MBE 2.0 offering. Um, so one of the questions I had for you is, uh, what are your criteria for recognizing companies to win the best practices award? And you know, what what are a couple of reasons that HCL stood out for Frost and Salovec to win this award? Great question. And um, I mean, great question really to get us started. Well, as I mentioned just before, you know, my role is more operational now, but before moving into this role, I was actually the global research vice president of our best practices team. And so therefore, I know about the criteria, the processes intimately, because I helped to actually set the standards of what our analyst teams worldwide must meet in order to select companies such as yours um, for a Frost and Sullivan award. So specifically, our global thought leaders, as they're going through and doing their research, they leverage five basic steps um, to help locate the best of the best. And so really, it starts off with having a large set of companies. And through our due diligence process, we work down to a list of about five or six. And then we continue to do more and more research, a lot of secondary primary, a lot of primary actually research to validate our initial learnings. And so then finally, we narrow it down to, to the, the best of the best, and um, which today is why we're here to talk to you, because you know HCL Technologies is being awarded with the Global Enabling Technology Leadership Award in the disruptive aerospace technologies market. And I want to say something a little bit, though, about the aerospace and defense market, because we cover that here at Frost & Sullivan, and you know, one thing that we know about it is you really have to be proven to be in this market and to be leading. Um, you have to have strong understanding and expertise due to the industry's complexity and regulatory requirements. So as a company in this market, you have to be here for a bit um, in order to really have that credibility. And HCL Technologies has. I mean, your company has over 20 years of experience working in this market, but it's not just that HCL Technologies has been around the block a few times. Your company is actually proven. So when our when our thought leaders were looking, you know, at your company, what we noticed was that you're combining your experience and know-how to create 
this new, you know, this solution called the model based enterprise or MBE for short 2.0. And it's helping to get customers to know how to strategize and plan on which technology trends fit into their existing infrastructure and which solutions are most pertinent for their future success. So while our progress, you know, our process and everything that we do here within our best practices team is rigorous, what we, you know, when we were doing the selection process for HCL technologies, the choice was really easy because our team loves to find leading companies that create solutions that help solve their customers' problems. Thank you. So um, with that, I guess I have a question for you. So now that we have established though that HCL Technologies has received this achievement, what would you say actually makes your company stand out in your opinion, Paul? You know, HCL has been driving digital transformations across multiple industries now for, for a long time. And I think we've been recognized in the market for that. Um, so one of our goals is always to understand what new technologies are coming to market and how we can match that against what our clients need. Now, uh, two areas that I'm personally very excited about, specifically as we look at aerospace and defense. Um, the first is that the aerospace and defense sector is a little bit of a laggard when it comes to technology adoption compared to the commercial sector. And that's obvious because of data requirements from a regulatory perspective, et cetera. So when you look at the development of cloud adoption, application, modernization, et cetera, um, companies have been the company in the AD sector a little bit more hesitant to adopt those until those companies have matured to meet the requirements from a ITAR or FAA or 15 et cetera. Um, but what we have is we have the ability now to truly take what we've learned on the commercial sector and bring it into the aerospace and defense sector. What we're seeing is a tremendous acceleration of adoption within aerospace and defense as, as Azure um, and other cloud technologies, Google, AWS has mature. Um, so we're seeing a tremendous adoption, not only in terms of, of moving applications into the cloud, but that has a trickle down effect in terms of driving modernization of all the applications, et cetera. So uh, that's one area that I'm personally excited about. We can bring existing tools and methodologies to the A&D sector. And the, the good thing for my A&D customers is that all the kinks have been worked out of those tools. So they're not the first ones using it. So so there's a maturity that comes into that. Um, I think we have a unique ability to bring that commercial capability and value proposition to A&D companies, especially from a global sourcing perspective. We have a tremendous amount of understanding of how to be ITAR compliant uh, in a global sourcing model. And we are able to deploy that within our A&D companies. And every A&D company is different depending on, on how they view it, how much risk they're willing to take it. But we can do all of those models. Uh, we have a strong on-site capability. Uh, we have a strong near shore capability. Um, so we can comply with all of that. I think the second thing that stands out is uh, we have a very strong engineering capability. I don't know if you're aware of this, but HCL actually started as an engineering company originally. I believe we still sell a little tablet we developed and manufacture. Um, so even within the aerospace and defense sector, we have a very strong pure engineering capability. And so we have the ability to bring those two components together, the IT and the engineering piece. And that truly is where the value lies. And I think this is where the value comes from MBE 2.0, the offering that we're talking about, right? The whole digital environment integration process um, is something that we can do because we don't just understand the IT side, we also understand the factory side. We also understand the whole supply chain side and the engineering side. And if you look at MBE 2.0, what we truly try to do is we're trying to take that digital integration from a, a, a tower-based model where you would have digital thread being done in the manufacturing side, you'd have a digital thread on the ERP side. Um, and, and we bring those together so you have a digital thread across um, and, and I think that's the value. Uh, the only other last thing I would bring up beyond that is uh, we are a company. Um, I still remember my professor in college telling me that the smartest engineer is a lazy engineer. And I think I see some of that in HCL, not because we're lazy, but we like to not do the same thing twice. So once we do something, we try and automate it, we try and leverage it. 
Uh, we've invested heavily in intellectual property within the aerospace and event sector. We have a we have a template for the AD sector on S four HANA. It's called uh, uh, it'll come to me in a second. I can't believe I can't remember. <laughs> um, and, and so so we actually have a template that accelerates uh, the adoption of S four. It's called Base ninety uh, for companies in the aerospace and events company who who wants to move to S four. So a lot of the standard processes are already pre configured. And we bring that template to market to, to bear for you so you don't have to go through it again. And we focus on those processes that are that are truly differentiating, which doesn't just save our customers money, but it also accelerates market. Um, so all in all, you know, I think if I combine um, our industry expertise, uh, most of our consultants in our aerospace and defense practice, especially those that deal with business transformation, have worked in industry. They all come with 15 or more years of experience. So we understand the industry. We understand the, the regulatory compliance issues. We have the ability to bring the best capability to bear in a global sourcing model. And we have strong intellectual property and we continue to innovate as, as we've shown with MB2.0. Um, I, I think those are the things that makes me excited about HDL sector. Well, you certainly make me feel very confident about our team, you know, recognizing you all because I mean, I like I said, I had heard a lot, a lot of these things, but not the details. Um, and I think what's all I agree with you, the value a lot of times is that convergence of, you know, the technologies and industries and, and all of that. So anyway, it's great to hear all that. And I, I'm going to like really try to use that phrase you were talking about, the lazy engineers. <laughs> I think that was really great. Um, well, let me ask you this. I um, kind of want to take a, just a step back a little bit because this has been something that has affected everybody in the last um, couple more years or so is COVID-19 and the impact that it had. And so with the unpredictability of COVID-19 in 2021, how has HCL Technologies adjusted? Yeah, I have, you know, it, it's very interesting. Um, HCL Tech actually recognized the threat and, and the global implications of very early on. Um, and I think we looked at it from two perspectives. So the first was from an internal perspective. We actually had a task force in operation in early January 2020, which was led personally by our CEO um, in order to prepare for this. And, and we looked at it from two perspectives, right? So one is HCL operations and the other one is impact on our customers. Um, what is interesting to me is we were able to adjust so quickly. I, I do remember we had a massive uh, 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 transfer that was happening where we were where we were just starting a project where we had to transfer knowledge from our customer to, to, our, to, to our resources. And um, that was all supposed to be done on site. And, and it was very large and we moved very quickly and within a month we were able to move that to a completely virtual model um and that transition which i think took around six or seven months actually completed on time with quality with no impact on slos so internally we were very able to move to a virtual delivery model from an on-site model where it was required um which was i think one of our biggest options uh, our biggest focuses and obviously a big factor of that was the adoption of tools uh, to enable this this transition, and that's actually enabled us to to drive our cost model a little differently today because we've learned how to do a lot more work virtually, which which is to the, the benefit of our customers as well. You know, I think from a customer perspective, um, we noticed uh, I would say two key things. One is there there's a much stronger focus on the supply chain and resiliency of the supply chain, um, which led to a huge demand and 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 an impetus for us to to start with MBE Toronto because it does impact your supply chain and visibility into your supply chain, obviously. Um, the second is we actually get a lot of questions around how we manage our core asset, which is our people. And they wanted to learn from us, how do you how do you work virtually? How do you measure your people? How do you track growth? And we were able to share a lot of that because obviously our, our consultant base in general is much larger than our clients, especially on the IT side. And several CIOs we interacted with and, and shared with them some of our HR practices, which I think was received received well. I, the second aspect from a client perspective is, is I think it led to a little bit of a different approach to a couple of areas. Um, obviously, there was a big focus on the customer experience. Um, we did see an uptake on the adoption of S4 HANA, for instance, because it has a more user-friendly interface than the, than the older models. 
Um, so we did see a lot of questions coming about that, and we were very well positioned to do that. And then the last thing, and this was very interesting to me, is um, there was also a large focus on the infrastructure side. Obviously, if you have more people working virtually, it places a lot more demand on the infrastructure. And more so than anything else, I think this is an area that the aerospace and defense sector has been lagging behind the commercial sector when it comes to adopting best practices for obvious reasons from a security and data protection perspective, right? But we did see a, a huge uptick in demand for understanding and adopting modern global best practices for PCAS and digital workplace. Um, and those are areas which which we are very comfortable working with and we were very excited about. Great. Well, I mean, obviously, we're all hoping that there's just so many things that, you know, nimble organizations um, have taken out of COVID-19 for the better. Um, and so it sounds like HCL Technologies certainly um, was one of those winners on that. So yeah, no, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. So Tanya, you know, I, I talked about A&D and what we've seen and what we've done. Um, from your perspective, as you look, as you look forward, uh, what are your predictions, expectations when it comes to disruptive technologies within the aerospace and defense industry this year or in the next three years? Well, Frost and Sullivan, we did a research study called um, Disruptive Technologies Transforming the Global Commercial Aerospace Industry through 2035. And some of the disruptive technologies that were identified in that study were some of the ones you would expect, you know, AI, machine learning, blockchain, virtual reality, big data, predictive analytics, IIoT. I mean, the list goes on. Um, but, you know, the one thing that, you know, I want to say when it comes to talking about aerospace is that, you know, any of the technologies we're talking about to disrupt, um, you know, they have to keep in context that the aerospace industry is global, it's complex, it's highly regulated, um, it needs high precision, and last but not least, a dedication to the safety of the products. And so as a result, the, the question really is less about what disruptive technologies are available to adopt because they're all out there and available, but it's rather which can be employed to create value without disrupting business continuity or product safety. And so almost every aerospace and defense company is on a digital transformation journey, which you, you know, kind of talked about that before, but it, that has to be unique to their digital maturity, their business priorities and customer needs. And so what we've seen is that HCL Technologies though is focused on and equipped to develop, implement and support almost all of these disruptive technologies that we mentioned in our research um, that are currently being considered by the aerospace and defense market. And what I really like is that your company though is working diligently with each customer to first help determine the issues and the opportunities that require any of these cutting edge solutions, but then you're going about the process of helping to select the appropriate technologies to meet those needs. So really just being a, what I think of as just a really great partner um, of assessing these technologies and applying them only where it's really appropriate for the customer. And because, you know, we really, at the end of the day, you know, again, so much digital transformation happening but technological progress and digital transformations are really just a means towards other things, such as maximizing revenue, reducing cost, improving quality, and optimizing business operations. So I think that's what's really critical at the end of the day is just to think about that impact, which I think HCL Technologies certainly um, understands and believes. Well, thank you, and 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 that's very true. Uh, you know, as as I look at our customers, you know, one of the things that you said at home with me, and I see this a lot, which is every company is at a different stage of maturity on their digital journey, um, and and having the ability to understand that and tailor your solution in order to meet the client where they are and helping them understand their roadmap is critical because you can't come in with a prepackaged answer, um, and and. and uh, 
you know, the other part of that to bring us back to MBE 2.0, this is what makes me so excited about the MBE 2.0 solution is because it doesn't just come in and educate our customers across towers. So we have finance people, we have designers, we have engineers, uh, we have people who actually work on the line all in one room to understand the process as a whole. So, so when you help the co- educate the customer across towers as to what is the art of the possible, but then you take into account what are the existing investments within each of the towers, because a company that has invested heavily in one tool in, in manufacturing might not be willing to throw away that, in, that, that investment to go with something else. And so that flexibility in meeting the customer specific requirement, I think is one of the strongest points and values uh, of our MBE 2.0, uh, 2.0 solution. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, let me, I've got one more question for you. Now that you've been recognized with this award, what's next? Uh, so that's an interesting question. Um, when people ask me that, I, I also make the first point, which is what's next is not always something new. There are two core capabilities on HCL, which I will not budge on. Um, the first is the focus on quality of our delivery. Um, for our customers, if we can't deliver on what we committed, we have no future. So while you're saying what's next, the core tenet will remain making sure that we have the smartest, best consultants in the industry we deliver based upon what our commitments are to the clients, which are measured by business value for them at the end of the day. So that's the number one priority. Um, I, I think the second component that adds to that is to continue investments into the intellectual property that we've already developed to help accelerate time to market and drive down costs, such as uh, Base90, which I, I mentioned, which is the template for, for uh, this for HANA, for A&D, um, MBE, which we talked about, uh, the MRO product. Uh, so HCL actually owns the maintenance, repair, and operations product that fits into the SAP environment. Um, so we will continue to invest in those. Um, I think as we look more forward, uh, one area that's of a lot of interest to us is as to help companies figure out how to monetize uh, and drive more revenue, both OEMs and MROs, um, out of our maintenance and repair operations. We have very strong capability in that area. We have the underlying tool set. We know how to integrate it into manufacturing. So there's a lot of companies looking at driving new revenue streams. We were very closely with them. We're excited about that. Um, outside of that, from a from a technology perspective, I think you've you've mentioned a lot of the areas that we are actively integrating into our tools, and not just on the digital transformation from application perspective, but also in the digital workplace area. So machine learning, uh, AI, all of those are driving productivity increases on the on the DWP side. So we are we are continuing to invest in that and integrate that, and again pulling the learnings from the commercial sector into our into our aerospace and defense uh, solutions. I think the last thing which is of a lot of interest to me um, is that we are seeing a lot of interest and potential on the metaverse and augmented virtual reality side. Um, you know, if, if, if you have an operator who has to build a complex, whether it's a ship or a turbine blade or whatever, leveraging those technologies are not only going to make their lives easier or make them more productive, but also reduce errors. Um, so I think that's the next big area. I'm not going to talk about that too much, but we are definitely looking at that and, and very excited about it. Oh, well, I can't wait. Well, thank you again, Paul, so much. It was great to be able to have this chance to, I say, sit down with you. But again, we're in COVID. <laughs> we're still having the effects of COVID where we, we were doing these things, um, you know, remotely. But it was really great to um, speak with you and learn more about what HCL Technologies is doing. And again, congratulations on this award. Thank you, Tanya. We appreciate it very much. And thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Yeah. Take care.